uh, rehabilitation plan and how that can be promoted. I think there is perhaps a bigger piece of work that needs to be done, especially for those teenagers who have been in care for some time, about looking at identifying um, those young people and progressing that further. Again, that's a piece of work that we all need to look at and try and progress that. Thank you. Uh, Theresa, you want to come in? Point of correction, we said um, in, in terms of numbers of looked after children, we currently have 390, not the 82. Just a point of correction. Uh, yeah, thanks for that correction. Um, any other questions or comments? No. OK, so um, it's page 20. Uh, I think we were just noting the report. Um, uh, so, uh, so, uh, ah, so the recommendation is that the board is recommended to respectfully endorse the IRO annual report for April 22-23 and the incredible work that has taken place to improve the best outcomes uh, we can for the children of Bluton and um, I think that's that's a, a fair recommendation. I, don't think there's any dissenting voices. So um, yeah, thank you for the, for your report and and uh, for for responding to our questions. Thank you. Um, okay, so moving on to um, item the next item of the, of the agenda, uh, item nine, which is the uh, family family hub start for life program uh, update. Um, that's on pages 49 to 94 of your agenda pack, uh, and that's page 54 on the PDF, and that's with uh, Michelle Bailey. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for letting us come and um, update you um, with regard to our Family Hub programme. came a while ago, um, and we've um, really moved quite a lot, um, so there's quite a lot to update you. So you, what I um, included was a report, but also a, a sort of a presentation that we're using to kind of regularly update our sort of partners and sort of strategic boards. Um, I just want, I don't want to go through it kind of because um, there's quite a lot of information, but obviously I'll take some questions. But I just want to highlight a few areas. Um, the first one you'll see, um, since I last came was around kind of the branding. So we've worked um, with a creative agency, the same creative agency that done the Step Forward Luton campaign. Um, and we've done a lot of engagement and consultation with our um, stakeholders, lots of families and focus groups, etc. cetera. Um, and um, we've signed off and agreed the, um, the branding that you can see, which is the H with the little bubbles and the Luton Family Hub. So that will be on all our kind of um, promotional uh, material and kind of um, our signage um, when we get that work um, agreed. Um, so what we've done, um, because um, which we don't want to dwell on, but obviously we had the closure of the children's centres. So we were starting from a different place um, from lots of lo other local authorities. And um, we've developed a network of family hubs, uh, which is a sort of hub spoke and outreach model. Um, so working with our partners and our communities um, um, and the the um, good community and partnership work that we've got in the town. Um, we've got sites um, at Parktown Community Centre, um, at Hockwell Community Centre, we've got some space, and then we've got satellite sites um, at Pastures Way Nursery, which was a former children's centre site, and Fox Cubs, which is in Dallow. And then we've got lots of outreach sites across the town um, in our face settings, um, some schools. We've got space at Farley, um, um, a Ripley Infant School um, and we're working with some GP surgeries as well so that's a that's continually being updated and sort of developed so um, we're utilising kind of what's already out there and where our families go um, to get sort of, sort of their help and support we're also looking at um, potentially if it's feasible having some space at the central library and that would truly be like a one-stop shop um, so today there was a national press release um, that said that all the 75 local authorities that have had this um, government funding have opened um, a family hub in their area. So um, we do have sort of two open, hoping for a third, along with all our other um, um, 
hub and um, spokes and outreach are, are a model slightly different than some of the other areas because we've obviously got to make it unique and suitable for our families in Luton so um so um there's work on that um we also are working really closely with wider partners so you'll see on one of the slides it says about kind of services without walls it's what the, the honeycomb slide or blockbuster slide as i call it i can't remember what slide it's on but we have to truly um we have to connect families with other services and support that's already been delivered in the town so things like our youth partnership service um our well-being services our gp surgeries and um, smoking cessation all you know um debt and finance and that so um we are we're starting that piece where well, we have been doing that piece of work so it's just how we connect that and one of the ways we're going to be doing that is we have commissioned a digital provider to build and develop a standalone family hub website and app um, that all professionals and families will be able to access 24 7 it will have um accessibility um so it will be able to translate into different languages with the recite function um, it also will have what we called like automated care pathways so it has um artificial intelligence um built in um and it will be able to connect all the information services that are out there so we're hoping that when that gets developed that will be the kind of our virtual front door for families their initial um place that they go to find out that information support that they can then um, use for um, to kind of self-care or get that initial help and help with that early intervention and prevention to stop our families then having to um, need um, more expensive interventions or care um, further down the line so um, that's really exciting so I'd like to be able to come back at some point and update you with that so, um, so that's a work is sort of in progress. Um, we also have I've probably forgotten some, um, an official sort of launch um, the second week of February. So we're um, having a, a, some of you may have been had an invite already, and but we um, that's now out on Eventbrite. Um, we've got an official launch on the 13th of February at Venue 360 for sort of professionals. But then we've got some opportunities in the community where we're inviting um, families, parents, and children to sort of come along. So that's um, the week beginning the 12th of February. Um, um, the other areas that we've kind of looked on. Um, you'll see in the information I gave you there's what are called funded areas so there's quite a lot of work being um, focused around um, infant feeding and parenting support what's called the home learning environment so that's kind of our under twos or under threes rather um, and their sort of communication and language um, we've got we've built in additional capacity by staff in certain areas and also um, there's a lot of focus on the perinatal mental health and that kind of infant relationship so we um, recruited to a um, parent infant team mental health team that sits within our CAM service which is our children adolescent mental health services and sits across the family hub so we've got some really good integrated and co-located posts we've got um, psychologists infant mental health practitioners that will be like very hands-on with our families trying to um, pick up um, issues early on so it's all the focus is all around kind of that universal offer and that early intervention and prevention um, we've also funded some maternal and early years um, social prescribing so we've got some healthy lives coordinators so we've got a, a whole life course approach now to our social prescribing so there's some really exciting things that have gone on have I missed anything I probably have so there's quite a lot to take in so I think it might be best if you have got any questions uh, thank you uh, any questions or comments Councillor Gallagher it was just one comment um, with regards to venues, if you could think about in the future somewhere in Wigmore, because it's a fair walk from Wigmore all the way over to Inspire for, you know, for mums. With yeah, it, actually, every time everyone says there's something, is there something in the east? So we have we are um, we have got some space at um, St Francis Church, so that's sort of Vauxhall, but, um, but we would 
potentially could look at maybe working with them um, with more primary school and I know um, uh, some risk school as well uh, they've got their early childhood um, so we just need to kind of work out what that looks like with schools um, yeah um, there's prob- there is some um, early years things that kind of run out of Stropsley Baptist Church I know that's not quite big ball but that's uh, yeah um, but yeah we, that is on um, that is in our mind so yeah because uh, the library in Stropsley is not ideal um, hasn't got space and like you say Inspire is you know a bit of a walk for some but yeah so that's why we've gone for that kind of outreach approach because we ha- we won't be able to have dedicated buildings in every area so there's a map that's included in there which um the the borough was split into kind of neighborhoods there were educational neighborhoods we've changed it slightly with the new ward boundaries and also um there's something that was called fuller neighborhood so it's a co- um, piece of work that's happening with the integrated care board around kind of gps and health as well so we've aligned it to that um so we wanted a somewhere something in each neighborhood so wigmore's the east bit um but um, that's why we've kind of looked at that kind of outreach model. So, um, yeah, so but we definitely take it on board. Uh, thank you. Um, Ashish Kadia. Thank you. Um, well done again. It's really, really good work. Um, and it's great to see that you've got some key measures of success, et cetera. Um, so I've got another comment, really, which is this is a real good opportunity for us to showcase the improvement in the area, really, I think. And so the success of this is quite critical. Um, so two questions from me then. The first is based on the performance of the programme to date, have you got any concerns? Um, so the reason why I'm asking that is any of the risks and mitigations that are in that presentation, for example, um, that you wanted to potentially just flag and raise, that's the first. And then the second, which is probably a bit harder to answer, but is there any indication of whether that funding might continue beyond what's stated? Because that would be great, wouldn't it really? So. Um, they um, align. So I would say we've got a very robust risk log. So the ones that we've highlighted are the um, main ones. Our main risk is going to be sustainability. The funding is till March 2025. So we are looking at how we can make that sustainable. Um, the guidance is quite prescriptive on what we can and can't spend money on. Um, but that would be our main risk, sustainability and kind of the, and also the capacity in the system where we've we've recruited to staff. Um, at the moment they're on kind of fixed term posts we will obviously be measuring the impact so it's whether that those um continue post 2025 what we're very very conscious that we don't want to stand up lots of sites and then have to come to you and say we don't have funding and you've got to close them again because we know know we've been there um so um that's why we've got that different network model um and then what i forgot what um, what were you no, no, it's about risks oh, and oh, funding. So yeah, so we always push back to the Department of Education. So money's coming from partly Department of Education, Department of Health and Social Care, um, and we're continually locally and obviously nationally all the, asking: Is that money going to be funded post 2025? Um, they always say there'll be a spending review, and all part. One of the positive things is all parties are like in agreement with this um but obviously this year there'll probably be a general election so um i don't i don't know if the funding we can hope and pray and um put some sort of pressure um even if it was continued in a lesser form um we would be able to keep some of the posts so it's the buildings that you know um i think is the problem but that's where we potentially need your support and any ideas so we're hoping that we can maybe have some conversations with Luton Rising and, um, and that and work with our partners so we work really really closely with Fly and Start so they're able as a voluntary organisation they can bid for pots of money that potentially we can't so we are kind of utilising everything within our, our powers. So. Uh, Councillor Wynn. Uh, Yes, I'm I'm from Stopsy, so I'm Councillor Gallagher's neighbour, as it were. Um, in the report, it's mentioned specifically Stopsy Library and Inspire. What parts of your programme are actually happening there? Because as the local councillor for Stopsy, I'm not aware of it. We don't have anything running as such out of 
Stropsley Library, I think they might have some sessions that such as like rhyme time, which the libraries use. Um, and then there are sessions um, that run out of Inspire, um, say our sort of healthy lives coordinators run out of there. There'll be sort of antenatal classes and that. So um, it, there's almost there's more of a, a sort of timetable of events um, for some areas that, that parents can sort of come along to. Um, so they're the kind of main ones that are running from Stropsley at the moment. So, but it, we need to kind of widen that and kind of maybe work with some of the faith settings that are based in Stropsley. As I said, I think the Stropsley Baptist Church, they actually have, um, actually they do run some sessions because they have um, a health clinic, baby clinic. So a lot of this um, work with regard to family hubs is um, focused on our naught to fives or our sort of preconception um to two um so there is some work going on um, and delivery out of Stopsy baptist church but it won't be badged at the moment as family hubs so now we've got our brand in which we only got signed off in December. yeah um and with our website you'll you'll start to see more so um hopefully over the next few weeks and months um the profile will be raised and um it's something that we really want to shout about because this is a really good news story and um it will show Luton in a really good light and it's something really positive for our families and the whole community just okay. yeah just, I'm not working oh I don't know if I'm working or not it sounds like I am just to add and I think what we need to be really clear is that family hubs is actually a partnership so when we say that family hubs deliver something it's actually as part of our partnership so there's some things that we directly fund, but actually what we're talking about is actually engaging with all the different partners across Luton that provide services to almost come to us, to almost all work together under that family hub banner. And that's what the app and the website, that's the aim is to almost bring, bring the system to work more closely together. So it's not just about what runs here, but it's how it connects to everything else that goes on. So there might be something running in Stropsy Library that might be a rhyme time at the moment. Once that comes under the Family Hub banner, which as we as we expand, we will, that will then ensure that once you are engaged in that, you can then access all the other Family Hub provision from that. So it's it's not just about putting lots of new things in. It's just about bringing everything and being being more of a partnership. So going forward then, um, how is this going to be more visible? How are families going to know what's going on? Um, I, I perhaps need to put this into context. Um, I, I'm a, a normal member of the finance review group that met last night. And on some aspects of what was discussed at yesterday's meeting, um, I cast some concerns about the overall direction and what seems to me to be a reducing commitment to the Newton 2040 program um, to the extent where at FRG yesterday it was agreed that um, we would have an update report on Newton 2040. So Two, two parts to what I'm saying. The first is, how do we make sure that this overall programme is more obvious to people? And secondly, um, a request, please, to make sure that you tie in with the rest of the people associated with Newton 2040, because you quote Newton 2040 in here, I'd like to see that it was more visible there mm. too. And so, yes, we need to kind of raise the awareness that will be part of our launch campaign and we've got a, a very clear comms and engagement plan. Um, and we are um, will have a lot more presence on social media. So that's one of the reasons why we've got a standalone website. So it's it, although it will link in with the Luton Borough Council website, it will be sort of at, 
on its own that people can access so and then the social media program will be the same so it will if you only need to look at the sort of step forward Luton campaign or things that other things that our partners put out there so we are we have got a long now program of work to kind of raise that awareness and get people talking about it um being able to come um into our hubs or access our our apps and um everything um we are very connected to Luton 2040 especially the element of Luton 2040 around child-friendly Luton we really see that the family hubs is a vehicle to us achieving the child-friendly Luton status um and strategically we are aligned so we are another piece of work we're doing is looking at everything not just in our family hub program but all our other work within public health how that contributes to Luton 2040 um so um so even so part of the Luton 2040 is around environment and kind of being greener we're looking at kind of more sustainable um, things when we're looking at our sort of promotional material kind of where the social value is and um, things that can be reused and that so we're very very sort of conscious of Luton 2040 every every day so with regard to the finances of that um, I don't know how that no. kind of the, the, obviously the family hub finances are, are very separate but be, us have been able to get that this funding has actually helped the, the town and the council considerably so and then it's link, we're linking with other sort of pots of work so just to give an example around kind of I mentioned social prescribing but we're starting to work with the hopefully with the, the football club Luton Town Football Club obviously they can now access more money around their community funding so we'll match funding some projects and again it's around health inequalities and that so I would can really assure you that and Elizabeth and I from like the public health team Luton 2040 and that population wellbeing strategy is our it's, it's our bread and butter yeah. so I think that, yeah, yeah I was just gonna say our yeah. missions are completely yeah. completely aligned yeah. Um, and we're very much on their horizon and the same way that they they are on ours. We work really closely with them. So, um, I, yeah, as I think, as Michelle said, maybe the finance, it might not look like that. But on the day to day and on the de delivery, we are absolutely committed to that reducing poverty. You know, we haven't necessarily talked lots about all the work we're doing around um, supporting people to get their benefits, supporting people to get um to get into back, back into back into employment they're all linked all these projects are all linked into family hubs so we're, you know that's our basis of you know supporting families out of poverty thank you for that i just just to reassure you i try and stay very conscious of it, of all the things that are happening in my ward and the stuff that is to do with these uh, hubs of, that you've been talking about in this report uh, have not come across my radar so that worries me a little that will be because we haven't had that official launch so we've only just got the brand in and that so um i'll make sure that there's something on gentle house roundabout that you'll be able to to see i'll put that there first my drive path yeah thank you uh any other yeah council bingham um i just have one question that might be a little bit broad um on the last page of your report so on page 94 where you've got um sort of like a map of your life course for the family hub of what you cover and what you don't cover so i can see that you've kind of got outcomes in each of this each of these age groups from pregnancy onwards where you've got five to 19 you've got outcomes one to three where it says uh, family links primary parent proposal what does that mean Sorry, is it on pa page 98 on the PDF? Is it the, the draft family hub model? Is it the... Yeah, it's page yeah, 98, okay. PDF, um, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, did you, you say about the family links primary parent puzzle? So family links is a, um, a parenting approach that staff will be trained in. So it's um, a sort of a course as such a parenting course for some families that might need a little bit little bit more additional support or targeted support so um families will be able to access universal services so for example that would be um digital online information or maybe a 
we had stay and play, but we've got like play and learn or antenatal. Um, but then there'll be some families that might need a bit more additional support. So they will be offered um, kind of different courses. So family links is a just an approach the same. We have like things like Solly Hull, which is a, again approach and um, five to thrive. And what we are doing with regard to kind of those approaches is ensure we're investing in training so that the whole workforce so not just the early years workforce but our family partnership service our mental health teams our not to 19 teams so our health visitors and our school nurses um some of our community and voluntary sector they can all be trained in the same approach so families should be able to go anywhere in the town and access services and have the same kind of methodology and an approach so and we having fewer approaches um rather than lots of different ones so yeah so the family links is just an a parenting sort of approach so part of that will there be anything in there that where parents can come to you for support with getting a child um like a referral or something done if they are frustrated with the school and they feel that they're not getting the results that they want so in terms of additional learning needs if they're trying to get a answer or a diagnosis just to know what's going on with their child because there are within my own school um in lucy there is quite a lot of cases where i'm getting quite a few parents um recently come to me saying look i've been asking the school for um an assessment to be done because i feel that they've got additional learning needs primarily they're thinking along the lines of adhd because of the behavior um but sometimes obviously with resources in schools um it isn't I know it's one of those things that education will say, you know, it's, it's the education department. But as a family hub, is there any support you can offer those parents if we were to signpost them to you to kind of get the ball rolling in terms of having I'm, an assessment? I'm going to take that, but what I'm probably not going to be able to do is give you necessarily a, an, 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 all, an, an answer. But I can't. The, the answer that I can give you is we are absolutely committed to that as part of the um children's trust board and um, the children's and education and social care team and we are actually literally today sat in a meeting which I'm just looking across to it to Raj as the director of children, uh, children's services because we sat in a meeting today and talked at length about how we support families who are in that exact position now that might that part of that might come through family hubs because what family hubs is supposed is going to be is that place where families can get support it won't necessarily be the place where you go to at the first level but what we might what we will aiming to do you know but but you know within within the next kind of 12 to 18 months is be able to support families but what we're doing alongside that and this will be another piece that's probably going to be coming here in the next couple of months is about how we look at supporting children who are families who say that you know they're worried about their child and their and their behavior or their social emotional uh, mental health looking at how we can work really holistically with that child rather than waiting for this diagnosis because we're really aware that a diagnosis sometimes seems to be the kind of the pathway to unlocking services but in reality it shouldn't be like that so it's a whole other conversation I think we would really relish having that conversation it probably isn't what the family hub are going to be primarily de delivering but we are going to be part of that process can I, I do anything yeah, can add, I just to add to that so we do have a lot um, we have put a lot in place around kind of speech and language and communication. So we know there's like waiting lists around that. So um, we've put additional speech and language therapists and practitioners so they can work with families earlier on and maybe um, give them strategies to cope while they're waiting to be seen. The same with the SEND. Um, we've got like things like called like opportunities group. So we will work with families to support them um, as, and then as well offer additional support around kind of maybe their the families or the parents sort of emotional well-being and mental health. We've got like parent chat groups or um, and then also I mentioned Solly Hull on, on earlier so that's like an online program so there's things that parents can do to kind of actually support themselves or um, understand the process as well so there's a lot of things around kind of understanding your child with special needs so there's lots of things initially that we can do to support not necessarily support them going through the whole process or to kind of um, circumvent something but yeah so um, the SEND bit it's kind of like Elizabeth said it's like connecting all the services so what we don't want and what's happening at the moment is families are 
they're not sure where to turn to so they end up going around the houses we've got lots and lots of services available in the town but nobody really knows about them so if we have one you know digital front door one number that people parents can perhaps be phone and then get triaged and be signposted referred or bit of hand holding to go to that other services that's the that's the plan so we stop those families and children falling through the gaps or waiting you know for a long time to be seen and things get worse and worse because it's yeah nothing worse than that thank you uh, any other questions or comments under this agenda item no thank you so um on this one so that's page 53 so uh Recommendations were to note and make comments on the direction of travel and the continued progress of the Luton Family Hub and likewise on the key milestones achieved in the, the last year and plans for phase two which of uh, delivery which we've done. So um yeah, thank you for for um for your report and for, for covering the, the questions raised. Thank you. Well done. Yes. Um okay, moving on to um the next item of the agenda, which is item 10, um, and that's the Luton All Age Mental Health Strategy. That's on pages 95 to 137 of your agenda pack, and that is page 99, I believe, on the PDF. And that is with um, Gabby Wolf, who's online, I think. Or is it with you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um got some um, slides to share. So um, I'm presenting our Luton Collaborative All Age Mental Health Strategy. Um, the purpose of bringing it to this meeting today is um, uh, to, to, to share and, and to note the strategy and also um, to agree for the strategy to go out for public consultation. Um, We've taken it so far to the Health and Wellbeing Board, um, CLT, and um, we're also at the stage of establishing a system leaders groups for delivery um, and planning and implementation workshop at the moment. Um, so um, just a bit of background, um, why do we have a Luton strategy? So obviously um, much of mental health commissioning um, uh, is carried out through the ICB and they do have their own um, mental health uh, strategy and plan. But we recognise that Luton has its own sp specific needs differing from other parts of Bedfordshire, Milton Keynes. Um, so we've developed our own strategy and identified our own priorities, recognising the young population that we have here, ethnic diversity, deprivation, um, to poverty, unemployment, homelessness, and the associated health inequalities. Um, and this is very much a partnership strategy with the um, BLMK Provider Collaborative and a uh, and also um, in partnership across Luton. So with um, ICB, our providers, um, voluntary community sector, and um, and and also our. Um, uh, uh, people with lived experience, um, children and young people have also contributed to its development. Oh, I didn't, sorry, it's just a slide, sir. Um, and also we obviously want to recognise the importance of um, uh, how this uh, feeds into achieving the goals of Luton 2040 um, and utilise um, our learning from talk, listen, change um, from the Marmot Health Equity Town approach um, and also um, sort of findings from other work in Luton, such as the Denny report. And um, considering um, we uh, we want to be considering the um, the specific mental health needs of the Luton population, so the higher proportion of the population with mental health um, issues in Luton. Uh, more people with severe mental illness and uh, higher premature mortality with amongst um, people with severe mental illness, which um, is, is higher than that that we'd see um, in this population in other parts of the country. Um, considering children and young people specifically, um, uh, more, more children and young people are accessing mental health services in Luton and more require a mental health inpatient admissions compared to England average. Um, and the proportion of children in care for whom Emotional well-being as a cause for concern is higher than the England average. 
We've also got specific access issues in Luton, um, uh, specifically uh, relating to children, our issues around that transitions to adult services and um, and access to services um, for those who are not of white British ethnicity, um, where we see um, that a lower proportion um, we can uh, see in this um, slide, uh, this graph here, how despite um, white British population uh, making up only about 20% of the population of Luton uh, overrepresented in accessing mental health services, um, whereas Asian and black ethnic groups are underrepresented. Um, so originally this strategy, there were, until quite recently, there were two separate strategies. There was an adult and a child and young persons one um, following discussion and particularly um, at the um, request of Robin, we had, um, we've now combined the two. And I think, you know, I think this is actually really important to recognise the, um, how, how um, the, the importance of not siloing the children and young person side and the adult side, particularly recognising that kind of intergenerational impact of mental health and how 75% of mental health issues do start from under 24. So any kind of um, work and, and um, around prevention really needs to start in childhood. Um, so this is some of the adult um, co-production and consultation that we've carried out. Um, and then for children and young people specifically, um, the, we've had a stakeholder event um, to uh, initiate the development of this strategy. Um, as you can see, it has been in development for quite a while now. Um, and we've included children, young people, parents, carers, um, and, and those working in the education, health and voluntary sector. We've had further consultation um, in June 23 uh, to um, to ensure that that the the kind of the, the strategy had represented the views of that population. Okay. We've also commissioned a piece of work with the University of Bedfordshire, um, Luton Young Voices, to understand the uh, experience um, and awareness around mental health um, amongst uh, children and young people um, and their parents of spe specific ethnic um, groups within Luton, as well as professionals working with them. Um, this, there's been a bit of delay of this, but this is going to be published hopefully um, within the next month um, and will um, very much contribute to our action plan development. Um, specific things that people in uh, young people in Luton have um, are, ha have have said have been about frustration around getting turned down when they've tried to access services, being advised um, to take on self help behaviours when it's actually not possible due to their life circumstances, um, and also the fact that um, you know the young people feel they need to be consulted about what money is spent on. Um, because you know before spending on something that might not be wanted. We've um, the vision and um, big outcomes for our strategy were co-produced with our Reimagining Mental Health Collaborative, which is a group of um, uh, uh, mental health professionals, people from um, voluntary community sector organisations, the ICB and people with lived experience and carers. Um, and they they consider um, that they would like Luton to be a community where they feel listened to, believed, understood, supported uh, and supported to become the person they want to be. Um, and within the, the, the Reimagine Mental Health Collaborative have also um, agreed 11 principles by which we should be following to implement this strategy um, and, and specific things to kind of pick out on this are around working as a social model as a starting point ensuring the client customer needs and wants to put at the centre of the approach, ensuring all work is underpinned by a trauma-informed approach, awareness of um, being aware of the power inherently present in that professional client relationship, um, and really kind of ensuring that people are empowered um, and and uh, you know, that and all voices um, are, are considered and you know the, the um, all of these are within the strategy that has been shared. So our, our key priorities that we've identified are around prevention um, and access. So prevention being that primary prevention that's going to be mostly focused around children and young people, preventing people from developing um, mental health issues in the first place, but also preventing 
worsening uh, mental health concerns and preventing reaching that crisis point um, and as and then improving access um, to services and you know, considering not just the physical um, access but also um, factors such as kind of co cultural competency of services um, and underpinning all of those are things integration so you know I think has, has been very much reflected in um, the family hub work and you know the importance of making sure that we're actually bringing services together they're working together to um, jointly serve the population in, in Luton um, making trying to kind of develop those kind of joint management um, approaches particularly for people with more um, complex uh, needs and ensuring kind of data and information is is shared between organisations and recognising there's so much work going on. So we're not trying to kind of necessarily reinvent the wheel. What we're trying to do is bring things together and ensure that everyone is aware of that and identify those gaps where we do need further um, work to take place. We also want to improve quality and experience. Um, and these are just some of the, 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 the concepts underpinning this around health equity town, uh, utilising a psychosocial model um, and ensuring that we're working along the trauma informed care approach, which was identified um, as, uh, as, as a kind of priority for working going forward um, in a government paper in 2022. Um, I, the, this is all within the paper itself. Um, so um, these are just some of the examples of how we will be trying to address um, the priorities in the in the strategy. And these will obviously be um, uh, developed in more detail within our co-produced action plan as well. Um, so um, with this is just kind of what I planned to go forward before we go to public consultation. Um, public consultation will take place um, as a we'll have a survey that's obviously available to anyone online to complete. But we also really want to be ensuring that we're accessing people who may not um, na not be able to um, you know may not naturally come forward to complete a survey. So we we're going to be holding uh, focus groups with um, specific. Uh, groups such as um, particularly ethnic groups, faith groups um, and, and children and young people in Luton to um, gather their thoughts through those focus groups um, before we finalise the draft report. Um, and then other next steps, um, as, as I mentioned, we'll be developing our um, action. So although the strategy for children and young people and adults has been combined, um, we're going to be developing separate action plans because recognising the different stakeholders involved um, and we'll be developing a dashboard, data dashboard to go alongside that to de deliver and monitor those key access and prevention priorities. The access side will be mainly um, uh, led by colleagues from ELFT but that obviously in, in co-production with other organisations but, but they will be leading on that. Um, in public health we'll be leading around the prevention um, priorities. Um, and as I say, we're setting up uh, the process of establishing those structures for um, delivery and governance and ensuring that relationships are there with the adults, learning disability and autism groups and, and boards as well, as well, um, and ensuring um, that, um, yeah, that we were really making, making sure that this is kind of all um, very much linked in with all the other kind of work that is going on um, and, and uh, including kind of that around wider determinants of health, such as housing and employment. Um, so, yeah, that's it for me. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, before I um, open it out to the floor, just, just a, um, a couple of questions, a question for me. Um, you showed a graph um, and, and commented on the um, um, apparent um, underdiagnosis um, of um, mental health issues for Asian ethnic group and black ethnic groups. So I was, I was just curious as to perhaps um, are you aware of the reasons behind this and, and how your strategy and action plan is going to address the, those apparent underdiagnoses? The um, the graph that I showed was around people actually accessing so um, accessing service or referrals to services um, for those specific ethnic groups. There's been quite a lot of work um, that has been going on around trying to understand the reasons for that. For example, in the Denny report, um, in our Luton Young Voices um, report, in Talk Listen Change, um, there's a um, I mean it, 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 it's it's 
yeah, it's quite wide ranging and and a lot of different issues there. Um, it's something that you know is can be reflected across other parts of the country as well. But clearly, with a particularly um, ethnically diverse population in Luton, it becomes a lot more important that we do take action to try and overcome that. But um, aspects of things like trust um, in in health professionals. Um, cultural understanding around mental health uh, so that can be you know for so, that can differ hugely but um, you know for, for some groups it's quite stigmatized um, for people don't want to admit having a mental health problem or it's just passed off as other as something else um, and maybe people are less uh, some people are less aware of services um, or how to access them um, so it is very wide ranging and, you know, this is there's, there's work that has already started to take place, you know, for example, around um, developing cultural competent CBT with our um, talk, um, talking therapies um, services. Um, there's there's a lot of work around trying to bring services to where people are and trying to make that additional um, uh, um uh, attempts to kind of try and sort of access people, improve awareness, reduce stigma, those sorts of actions. Thank you. Um, Councillor Khan? Sorry, I won't be too long. I'm actually freezing, so I do want to go. Um, so I have two questions, um, very brief ones. And if you can't, if you don't have the answers today, I'm, I'm happy to take it over email. But first one is, um, it's a bit pedantic, but it's around the methodology that the Luton Young Voices research is using, because I'm particularly interested in seeing how sort of their research is, what sort of methodology they're following and how that will feed in. And um, secondly, the consultations that have already taken place, did that include from these different focus groups um, specific like case study examples of what has worked and what hasn't worked? Um, so, yeah, those are my two questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. In terms of um, the Luton Young Voices, and I don't know, Elizabeth might be able to answer it. So I've came into post after all of this work that you've just mentioned has actually taken place. But um, um, I understand this was done by kind of structured interviews um, with um, different specific groups. But I don't know if Elizabeth has got more. Do you want to know kind of in the detail of the methodology? Was there anything specific? It's an ethnographic approach, but... Yeah, so the eth um, yeah. But specific details yeah. of the methodology, yeah. the qualitative, whether it was. Yep. OK, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we can absolutely what well, if they would be helpful and you know, I don't want to go into all the details today. We actually do have like the um, the, the research, uh, the profile, how what they were going to do. But just for kind of in a summary, it was interviews with young people. Um, but broken down by ethnic group and by age, we did two age groups, 11 to 15 and 16 to 18 year olds, because they're understanding that there would be different issues brought up. The researchers were trained part of the University of Bedfordshire. They were specifically trained in the topic guide, what questions to ask, but it was very much a focus group. So they were allowed to kind of be very open and the, the questions were prompting. Um, so they were, that was with young people. We then spoke with parents um, of from the same ethno ethnic group. So kind of looked at the differences between what parents were saying, what um, their children, young people, and then their parents. And then we also um, interviewed key stakeholders. So both mental health professionals and some, not very many community representatives as well. So it was all qualitative. It's all completely transcribed. We had some of it was in different languages. So we had translators as well, and it all had to be translated from various languages back into English. That was a very long process. But I'm really happy if you want to see all the details and what it's not quite, it's almost ready, isn't it? draft to the final draft to me so yeah um i'll be really keen to um, actually see the final product as well as sort of our action plan but i also kind of want to see the findings and the actual report would that be made available to us as members then if you ever saw the um uh, tlc approach in that report it, it took a very similar approach to that so that was covid looking at covid this, this is obviously not not just looking at covid looking at mental health but it was a very similar approach and the report will fo probably follow similar lines but absolutely once it's published we will absolutely be be circulating that and disseminating that further uh, ashish oh. okay thank you uh, sorry I oh sorry oh okay sorry okay 
Sorry, apologies. I um, but also I think were you present for the um, uh, the the um the stakeholder events for developing the children's part of the strategy? Can you? I think it was around whether we had case studies of best best practice and what didn't quite work with the, in, engaging with the children and young people. So that that was um that was done there were a couple of events it was actually done by it wasn't done by myself it was done by someone who was working with both of us at the, at the time so she went to various um young people's groups so either through elf or through other, other kind of um young people focus groups i think through the children leaving care group and had a discussion with them around the you know what they wanted to see in a in a, a mental health pro in a mental health strategy and experiences etc i don't I've seen a couple of outputs from that that wasn't written up as formally, um, but it all obviously then fed into the strategy. I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, really good work again. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I really like the fact that there was an evaluation ahead of the strategy being kind of consulted upon. So well done on that. Um, I was just going to ask a question, and it's, it's my naivety, so I'm not sure, so forgive me if it's applicable or not. Um, so in terms of meaningful consultation that you're about to go through, has there been any consultation with staff, i.e. staff in the areas that you're doing? So you're about to go out with a number of key stakeholders, but what I want to know is actually, has the staff been consulted on that strategy? Because obviously they're going to go out and deliver it, aren't they? So. Yeah, so the actual development of the strategy has been in conjunction with um staff across um so uh, across kind of cams and elf and um uh other other providers voluntary and community sectors um we've shared um yeah we've shared we've shared the strategy very widely um and um so I mean, it's, as I say, it has been developed and we've kind of gone and spoken to individuals um, in group meetings in, um, as I said, we've kind of got a reimagining mental health collaborative. We've kind of had an oversight of um, during the development of the strategy as well. Sorry, I, it may sound like a silly question, but um, obviously if the staff aren't buying into it, then it could be the nicest and best strategy in the world, but it's going to fall flat on its face. So, that, so, sorry, so that's that's circle wide. So it's good to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wynne? Yes, just a, a couple of things, I, I guess, based out of personal experience, unfortunately, within my family with young people with mental health problems. Um, the, the comment that, that was made on page 108, I, I think, was particularly relevant, which is that uh, the statement was made, the problem is we don't know how to help. And, and I think that what I'd like to see come out of some of this work is some practical ways in which people can be shown how to help when they come across instances of mental health, because I think that's deficient across the board in terms of mental health um, activities. My biggest concern, however, is that most of the report is based around adult mental health. Um, we're here in a children's group. Um, I wondered why it is that most of the report is to do with adult mental health and not children. So I, I'm, I mean, so um, the, we, uh, I think as you'll see that there's the, um, in terms of looking at what the um, what, the, what we know about mental health and kind of the background, we've got sort of the separate sections for adult and children, and young people. But actually, in terms of, I think the rest of it, it's, it kind of covers both. I mean, it should be covering both. I realise mental health is an absolutely enormous topic um, where there'll be much more detail within our action plan um, and it has been agreed as kind of part of this kind of um, co-produced development that it's not going to be a massively lengthy document, although it has somehow developed as more longer than we'd intended. Um, but so, I mean, in terms of looking at what our priorities were, are, they are, those priorities are across both adult and children, and young people. Yes, that they're going to be um, taken forward maybe differently, but a lot of those things will be similar um, 